So here's the thing. When it comes to traffic generation, there are a few things you need to be aware of. Number one, you either pay with time or you pay with money, right? That's the best thing. So there's no, well, there's free traffic, but free traffic does mean that you've got to put the time in. The second thing you need to be aware of is that the traffic policy can be quite variable. So when you're testing your funnels, when you're driving traffic, it may work one day, next day it doesn't. So you kind of want to average it out over a period of time. And also you want to understand where the traffic is coming from, because if the traffic is coming from, say, solo ads, it might not be as good as traffic that is warm that's coming from affiliates. So not all traffic is the same. And what you need to do for your business, whatever it is you're selling, it could be e-commerce, it could be courses, it could be um, other kind of digital product services, whatever it is, you need to see which one fits your needs also based on what you can afford. Now, a lot of the bootstrapping go very quickly for one of these two, two strategies. So they go for the free traffic because bootstrapping means you don't have a lot of money, I mean, you kind of try to make it, and that's what you go for. Now, I can tell you, if you're hustling after your nine-to-five work, if you're trying to kind of make things connected, then you need to be able to fail fast. You need to be able to be successful fast. And in that case, what I strongly recommend you is that you focus on pay traffic. But as I'll show you soon, there are a few challenges with that as well. So you really need to understand different scenarios in which one kind of traffic is better than the other, and then you need to go for that. Okay? Hey, Sape. All right, I'll take all the questions as well throughout, just keep them coming. So let's talk about these three kinds of traffic, and I'm sure you know them already. The first one is paid traffic, where you either do solo ads or you do Facebook ads, Google ads. Let's even put in affiliates in here, because affiliates would take 30 to 50% of whatever sales they make. So in a way, you're paying for traffic in terms of money. Just that with affiliates, the money comes later, right? Then you've got the free traffic. And free traffic is of two forms. One is inbound, which is what HubSpot, you know, kind of started as a trend, which is content marketing. You go uh, provide a lot of value on Quora. You go to different Facebook groups and answer questions. And you're kind of attracting people towards you, right, by just putting out awesome value out there. And you hope that a lot of people come to you, do guest posts and whatever else it will take. Then you've got free traffic, which is outbound based. So this is where you have to hustle for traffic. So by hustling, I mean you have to reach out to influencers. You have to do cold messaging, cold emailing, cold calls even. And I know we hate cold calls. I know we hate the idea of picking up the phone and talking to another human being unless we know them. That is perfectly fine. You don't need to cold call to get good outbound traffic. You can also cold message people. So the way I do that is I find people who are relevant to my business either on LinkedIn or Facebook. Twitter, not such a great source. Instagram doesn't quite work for me. I don't use it a lot. You know, so what I tend to do is I look on LinkedIn and, and Facebook and I find people who are who fit the mold of my ideal customer, right? So let's say my ideal customer, the ideal customer is someone who's making at least 5K a month by themselves before I even step in because I can take them from 5 to 50. But before I step in, I want them to make at least 5K a month. I want them to be doing this or close to be doing this as a full-time business because I prefer to work with someone like that because, again, I can scale them up faster. And then finally, I want them to be, uh, let's say, you know, I want them to be a native English speaker, whatever that requirement may be, but I want them to be a native English speaker so that at least we can have a decent conversation and I can help them out, right? So I can go find people like this all the time on LinkedIn, on Facebook as well. I can go to different groups. I can... Uh, you know, do a quick poll. I could just ask people like, hey, you know, who's kind of doing really well with selling courses? I've got a few questions to ask. And I'll find people like these all the time. Now, of course, I could, hey, Carmen, hey, Lester as well. I could lower my expectations and I could say, no, you know what? I want to help everyone. So I want people who are not even making any money, but they're interested in product creation because then I can bring them into Guide View, right? So that could be my target market in this case. So you need to understand what your target market is, and then you can drive traffic either via free and paid channels. But let's talk about what are these channels good for? So let me just drag this a little bit here. Okay. So when it comes to paid traffic, 
pay traffic is really good if you know your numbers. So if you're that kind of person who really knows how much their LTV is, which is you know customer lifetime value, if you know how much you can afford to spend, what are your profit margins and everything, it's really good to know. But that's a little bit difficult when you're just starting out. If you're testing, you have no idea if it's a recurring offer, you have no idea how long someone's going to stay. Even if it's a one-time offer, you don't know the conversions. You don't know the refund rate. You have no idea. So if you don't have any numbers at hand, you're going to struggle, right? In which case, I would not recommend pay traffic. However, if you have money to spend and if you have good margin, this is definitely the way to go. So even if you're one of those nine to five uh, job people and you're hustling on the side, if you've got a couple of thousand a month to spend and just not worry about it, or even a thousand a month just to spend and see how it goes, then absolutely go for this. Because as long as your margin is good, sooner or later, you will make your money back. You still have to work towards it, but you will make your money back because you have enough to spend. For someone who's only got 100 bucks to spend in a month on ads, this might not be a good fit. That's important as well, right? Let's talk about free traffic then. Free traffic, which is inbound, is amazing if you're really good at SEO. Personally, I'm not very good at SEO. I struggle sometimes. So I asked Stephen, who is much better than I am at SEO, as to what should I do then? Well, how should I pick my keywords? You know, how should I... Uh, stuff the article with the right kind of keywords. So I'm not very good at it. I'm trying to get better, but this is something that is easy if you know how SEO works. And if you are organized and you can spend time and money on marketing, content marketing is great. But what I mean by that is, you know, if you can say, okay, I don't have to worry about results for six months. Perfect. And if you can really schedule like a content calendar, you can publish content on Facebook, on Twitter, and all these places. Just, you know, you're just naturally really good at it. Awesome. This is a good fit for you, but not everyone is organized. I'm not that good either. Then finally, if you're comfortable chatting with people, then go for the outbound or the call messaging mechanism. What I mean by that is, say, if you go to a party, and I'm not saying you have to talk to someone about what, you know, you want, but you have to talk to them about what they want. So if you go to a party, and you want to have a conversation, but the only thing you can talk about is, what do you do for work? Well, that's crap. That's not going to be good. What you need to be is a good listener. You need to propose a topic and you need to just let them talk. So if you're comfortable chatting with people, this is a good thing to do. You should still be able to lead conversation, but you need to be comfortable chatting with people as well. Second, if you believe that people are a critical component of a successful business, then outbound is right for you. So if you feel that a business is all about serving people, providing value to people, this is good. If all you want to look at numbers all day, go for pay traffic. I mean, if you're really good at logical uh, positioning, decision-making, go for the numbers. You just you won't have to worry about anything ever again. Like Bill Cutter Cry, who's a good friend of mine, he's really good at numbers. Like really, really excellent numbers. That's all he does, Facebook ads. I, on the other hand, I prefer to be in a more people-based business. But even if I help less people, but I want to help them. I don't just want to sell them a software. I will actually be there for them when they get results. So different way of approaching. And finally, if you want to do this on the cheap. So if you're kind of person who's like, yeah, money's a little bit tight at the moment, or I'd rather put my money in development like we're doing at the moment, then cold outreach or cold messaging is much better. Hey, John. Hey, Amanda. And Gonzalo as well. Cool, we've got lots of people. So in that case, the cold outreach or cold messaging is better. And here's how it works. I will simply take, let's say, um, I find someone in another Facebook group or LinkedIn, for example, who is my ideal customer. So they make 5K a month, more or less. They do this full time and they are native English speaker. So what I'll do is I'll contact them and I'll say, hey, Paul or whatever the name is, um, you know, I looked at your profile and really impressed by what you're doing. I think it's very awesome, the lifestyle you're building. I'd love to talk with you because, uh, you know, this is something that I'm good at helping people with, and I'd love to know what works for you that doesn't work for other people. Are you available for a quick chat? Remember, I'm not trying to sell him anything. I'm saying I want to know why you are good at what you are good at. Share your stuff with me. And he will share because I'm not asking him to give me his secrets. I'm not saying... Tell me step by step what you do. I'm asking him, I'm curious to know what works for you that doesn't work for other people. And he's like, cool, you know, I can share my 
my USB, my winning advantage, my, my something that's going to uh, help me stand out, help me be the alpha person with this guy. 50% of the time they say, yeah, sure. You know, like, do you have a candle link or here's my candle link? Let's talk. And we talk. And if it's a fit, I sell them Kaibu or whatever else I have. If it's not a fit, that's perfectly fine. Sometimes we just chat. They're like, oh, I can't talk. Or sometimes I can't talk because I'm with a baby. And I'm like, just, you know, if it's okay, I just like to chat. Uh, you know, I can't do a call at the moment because I'm busy with the baby. But I'd love to know what works well for you that doesn't work well for others. And usually he or she will share something. So if you believe that you're comfortable chatting with people, if you believe that people are a critical component of successful business, and if you want to do this on the cheap, this is the way to go. Now, having said that, there are some, let's say, problem points with these as well. So with paid traffic, you need to learn everything. There's very little wiggle room for mistakes. What I mean by that is that if you want to spend money, it is your money you're spending. You can't just experiment forever. You need you have like a limit. You're like, okay, two thousand dollars and I'm not breaking even, I have to kill this and I have to go to do go do free traffic. Right? If I try and sell this, but I can't scale this up. Well, I have to stop it and do content marketing. Plus, you need to learn all of this. If you're doing nine to five, I mean, honestly, I don't think you will, you will have time to learn this stuff. That's the tricky part as well. Okay. And then I'm actually going to just go ahead and read Marilyn's comment before I go further. Marilyn's been saying, I've been having these exact conversations with my practitioner group, as in the money and skill required to place good ads in SEO versus finding ways to access free traffic if you don't have the budget or the skill. Exactly. So let's talk about content marketing. And again, we are going deeper into that at the moment because now we have the budget to extend ourselves and I'm really trying to improve myself there. It's a great long-term strategy. However, you're still at the mercy of Google because simply creating a piece of content is not enough. I'm using Ahrefs. I mean, I can maybe even show you this spreadsheet right now. Like look at all these keywords that we're looking at potentially targeting. And if I think about all of this, and this is about what, uh, 1,590, so 1,600 keywords. Of course, I won't write about everything, but the point is that when I write, I still have to build backlinks. I can't just put out a content and say, I'm done. I'll just put this on Facebook, Twitter, Quora, LinkedIn, and we're done. No, it's got to be followed up. Like I have to do guest posting. I have to uh, go back for links from other people. It does work. I mean, some might just link if my content's awesome. It does work, but it takes time as well but it is a very good long-term strategy. And then finally, if I think about the cold messaging, cold outreach, there's one problem with it. Initially, and it's not going to be a problem if you do it again and again, but initially when you find someone good, it's going to be difficult to know what to say, right? So let me give you an example here. Let me just jump onto Facebook and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to go into one of the Facebook groups that, um, let me think which one could be. I think the high ticket one has, so this is pretty awesome, right? So let me, let me show you this. Uh, there's a group called high ticket society, I think, or it's, it's, I think it's high ticket selling. So everyone here, yeah, it's a really big group. Everyone here, more or less everyone here has spent $5,000 to buy a course from this guy in the middle. Everyone here is spending a lot of money to buy a course called clients on demand uh, where they, sell $5,000 coaching to other people, right? So it, it's kind of a vicious circle, like, you know, he sells them $5,000 coaching to teach them how to sell $5,000 coaching. But anyway, I know all these people probably have money, right? I know that all these people who are talking here probably do have something to offer to me in return for my time and my effort to help them increase their results, which is true. So what I'll do is let me find someone not one of these live videos, but I want like a conversation from someone. Okay, this one. So I could take Darcy, for example. Uh, does anyone have a performance goal review template that they use for their staff? I have a VA, I want to start doing this, but I can't find any good ones online. So I could say, Darcy, I have one, I'm going to PM you. That is if I have something, right? So I'm going to get in touch with Darcy and say, Darcy, hey, I'm looking for this. This is what I use. This is my process. I have a template as well. Uh, I can link it to you, but I can also kind of show it to you uh, on a call if you want. And plus, I'd love to know more about your, bus your business. I'm always networking with people. I'm always trying to understand people better. You know, is that okay? So 
I could strike up a conversation. Uh, I could turn that cold prospect into warm prospect, probably do a call. Even if I don't do a call, she's in my inbox, right? I could ask some questions, understand a little bit more about a business, see if she's my ideal client. So that's what I do. I go to a group and I find someone who is a good, let's call it a target for a second, for whatever it is that I'm selling eventually, right? Now, if I go back here, so initially it's difficult to know what to say, but if you kind of look at their conversations, if I go look at Darcy's profile, I'll know what Darcy is about. Like as long as the profile is public, maybe, you know, she'll have posted about uh, Christmas holidays coming up. She'll have posted pictures of a grandkids. Now, I don't have to be creepy. I don't have to say anything that's too personal to her. But I'll say, you know, hey, Darcy, um, you know, what did you also want to ask? What did you think about reality juggling? Did you like it? Because, you know, one of my students is thinking about getting it. And then she might turn around and ask, well, what do you, you know, what do you teach? Right? There's always that possibility where I plant that idea in her head. So it doesn't hurt to get to know these people as well. The other challenge is that it's impossible to find leads at scale. So this is important when you're doing cold outreach because this is God's honest truth. Cold outreach will not give you 100 out of 100 results. So if you contact 100 people, you might only get 20 of 20 positive responses. And that's not bad. I mean, especially via Facebook Messenger. If you're doing just cold emailing, your response rate is going to be even lower. I've done cold emailing before. I send 100 emails, five of them open, three of them maybe respond, then, you know, one of them leads to a conversation. The conversion rate from emailing them to a phone call or just a connection is really low. On Facebook, however, because all these people are there, I know what they're about. I know what it is that interests them. I can quickly reach out to them and I can contact them. But like I said, it is difficult to do this at scale. Okay, so yeah, there's nothing wrong with cold outreach. Everyone does it. Think about where you are in terms of money, in terms of time. So if you have, let me let me draw this actually graph for you and I think that can give you an idea as well. Okay, so let's say if I think about money and if I think about time, Oh, money is not dollar. Money is dollar, but okay. Well, money is dollar. What am I saying? Money is dollar. So if you have, this is like a lot more money. This is like you have a lot more time. So very few people amongst us have a lot of money and a lot of time. Now, if you don't have any money and if you don't have any time, you kind of fall in this quadrant. You probably should not be doing this anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh, you should just quit and do something else. Like, honestly, turn to get me the wrong way, it's very difficult to break it uh, online if you don't have money, if you don't have time. But if you have more time, but you don't have enough money, then you could do one of the, I would say, cold outreach, right? That's what I would say for free traffic. You can do cold outreach. Okay? If you do it via Facebook and LinkedIn, it works really, really well. Okay? Then if you've got more money, but not enough time, then you can do Facebook ads because, you know, they need just a little bit of time to optimize. So once you set them up, you can do them over and over again. But if you also have money, if you have money, if you have time, then I would say go for content marketing because that works quite well as well. Now, of course, some of these are interchangeable, right? There are people who have lots of money, lots of time, and they're doing Facebook ads. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, so just think about what fits you better and focus on that. Think about where you are financially where you want to be, and which model will work well for you. If you go to Facebook and if you don't find a group that is conducive to what you're trying to sell, what I've just shown you might not work. Like if you're, if you're for example, uh, a car mechanic who's selling, you know, services locally, Facebook groups might not work unless you find that one Facebook group that's local. So think about that as well. All right. Uh, perfect. So I said it's working. People like Gary, we say you should be hitting seven platforms. Are you focusing on future channels? Marilyn, very good questions. Honestly, Gary probably has a really big team to do all of this. I don't. Like I, I do know some people are hitting multiple channels, but I'm not because I just wouldn't be able to spread myself so thin. Plus, I would rather conquer one. I would rather become really good at one than do multiple. So, for example, I'm doing Facebook quite often, and um, I – was doing YouTube for a while, but I just, you know, kind of got a bit tired of recording a video a day. I might go back to it, but I might do less of it, right? Uh, I know Gary, we put down like a ton of content, even like one minute, two minute long videos. 
uh, Gary Vee's content machine there. I mean, there's LinkedIn as well, which is good. I could be hitting that as well. And there are a few other things like Pinterest, Quora, Reddit, and all these things. So I think seven's a little bit of an overkill if it's just you. Don't do all of that. You're going to burn yourself out. Okay, so that hopefully answers that question, Marilyn. Um, let me see. John, great value. Neil, thanks so much. Of course, most people find it absurd being pitched on the first time contact. Any other to do the better? Um, yeah, so don't pitch on the first time. Like, do not. Like, remember, when you call messaging someone, you're not supposed to pitch. Your goal is to give them value. And, and again, depends on how you do it. If you remember, uh, when we did My First Thousand, there was a guy, Aiden Corkery, he would just, you know, pitch on the first uh, contact. And, and again, the kind of audience that he was going after was people who were making no money, who were working part time, and who were kind of desperate. Like, he absolutely looked for people who were desperate. And he knew what to give them. He said, hey, here's a quick, uh, you know, step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to make your first $100 online. So he was giving them exactly what they wanted because his follow-up wasn't that as well. My follow-up will cost monthly. My follow-up is going to be somewhat expensive for everyone. So I don't want, you know, these people. I don't want opportunity seekers. I want people who want to build a real business. So for me, if I pitch them immediately, they will be turned off. It's better that I build a little bit of relationship with them. And if I understand their pain better, I can position my offer to them as well. So that's one key difference. Difference, yeah. Yeah, like Lester said, start with one or two. Otherwise, you will risk burning out yourself. Exactly. Start with one or two channels. Otherwise, you'll burn yourself out. And trust me, you don't want that. I've been burnt out as well. And, you know, it's just, it's not good. It's really not good. Cool. Okay. If no other questions, we'll end this now. I'll go back to the conversation, see if I missed something later on, I'll answer them manually. But again, uh, keep an eye on all of this. I think it's very, very good. I think, I'm not saying this is very, very good, just to uh, tell you how awesome I am, but I'm just telling you it's good because if you understand, if you keep these principles in mind, you will be able to go after the right channel and uh, see which one works well for you. Yeah. Marilyn is saying next year I want to get good at SEO and Facebook ads. Exactly. Take one or two at a time. I mean, Stephen uh, told me about a book called Traction. I still, I think it was Traction. I haven't read it. I have to uh, say I'm quite ashamed. But Traction said that there are 13 channels for marketing or advertising. I can't remember. So don't do one every day. I would say do one every quarter or even six months if you have that kind of business life cycle. Get good at that. Or if you have money, hire someone to get really, you know, someone who's already good at one of these channels and try that. And honestly, some of them might not work for you. So if I'm going after uh, small businesses, you know, maybe they don't hang out in, on Reddit. Maybe. So I can skip that and move on to the next thing. Maybe uh, people are just more responsive on YouTube than on Quora. You know, maybe my ROI on YouTube is better than on Quora. So I try both of them out, but I stick with the one that scales and that works. That's the key. All right, that's it then finally. Keep the questions coming. Go to the pin link, which is socialaudiencefinder.kivy.com slash exclusive. It's a very short time deal. I'm going to take away this video when that deal comes off as well. So just check it out and let me know if you have any questions. All right, take care, everyone.